Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm here with another video from Google Earth Engine tutorial. Today uh, we will explore how to detect landslide using Sentinel-2 data in Google Earth Engine. In order to do this, I'm gonna use NDVI index in order to change, uh, in order to analyze the change between uh, two images before the event and after the event. Okay, let's start. For the first step, I defined an study area that I know the landslide is there. You can use draw a rectangle from Google Earth Engine tool or you can upload it easily using assets. In the next step, I defined my own preferred name for the geometry. In the second one, I used center object in order to put my study area in the center of my screen. And finally, from here, I added to my layer. In the next step of this tutorial, I used Sentinel-2 data. For calling this, I gave it a name and used image collection for Sentinel-2 data. If you go to search, and search for Sentinel-2, you can find it here. Let me give you an explanation. There are two different types of Sentinel-2 data set. This is top of atmospheric, uh, that its correction has been down. I'm gonna use this one, level C. A brief exp explanation regarding this product you can see here, and also its ID that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use the harmonized one, here it's different. In the second line, I defined my study area using filter bonds. After that, I have to use filter date in order to specify the date that I'm interested in estimating NDVI for this. The landslide for my study area happens in the 25th of January 2019. In order to do this, I'm gonna calculate NDVI for six months almost, and I'm gonna use the median of NDVI before the landslide happened. In the next step, since we are using optical data, the existence of cloud is obvious in order to do this i'm gonna select images with less than 20 percent cloud cover you can choose the other percentage for example 10 in order to get more pure data sets for your purpose however i'm gonna use 20 percent here and in the last step of this part i selected two different bands band 4 and also band 8 in order to detect, in order to estimate NDVI. As you know, these uh, two bands are with the special resolution of 10 meters. And one of them is related to near infrared and also the other one is related to red bands. In the second step, I'm gonna use an uh, NDVI function here. In order to calculate NDVI, I'm gonna give it a name, use function, and also here, normalize the difference. I use this one in order to calculate NDVI for my study area. In the next step, I rename it, it as NDVI and I return all the NDVI in one collection using advanced. 
very good. Until now, it's okay. I have a collection of NDVI from 2018, from June to 2019, 24th of January. I have a collection of NDVI for this period. I'm going to get the median of this NDVI. In order to do this, I'm going to first use my collection, Sentinel 2 collection, and I'm going to map and apply NDVI index on this collection. In the second step, I'm going to use median in order to apply, in order to use the median of NDVI for my collection. This means that I'm using almost six months NDVI values median in order to detect the change before the landslide occurrence. And here I use clip in order to limit it to my study area. Right now, these parts belong to the NDVI estimation before the landslide occurrence. Right now, I'm going to do the same things for landslide. After I'm going to do the same NDVI calculation for the uh, time after landslide. This means that it's going to be after 2019, 24th of January. Again, the same procedures. I'm going to use Copernicus harmonized product for my purpose. In the second step, I define it my study area using filter bands. In date, I have to put the time after landslide. As I said, landslide happened on the 25th of January 2019. Then I'm going to use the time after landslide. This means it's going to be one year. Maybe it's okay. Or you can choose six months. Depends on your preference. Again, I'm going to use filter in order to limit to the cloudy pixel. I'm going to use 20% for this purpose. And in the final step of this part, I selected two different bands, band 4 and also band 4, band 8. Again, I'm going to apply the NDVI calculation for Sentinel-2 data after landslide. Get the median of this collection like I did before. Okay, until now it's okay. As you can see from the previous lines, we calculated NDVI for the collection before the landslide occurrence and also after the landslide occurrence. Right now, I'm going to have their change between two different collections before and after the event. In order to do this, I'm going to use NDVI difference and after here select NDVI I'm saying subtract from the collection of NDVI that I have before the landslide occurrence in the final part of this I'm gonna rename it as the NDVI difference and clip it to my study area. Very good. Until now, it's OK. I have the change in NDVI before the event and after the event. In order to detect change in NDVI, I'm going to apply a threshold for NDVI difference. I'm going to apply less than 
minus 0 0.y. Let me show you some information regarding NDVI values. As you know, NDVI values is extended from minus 1 to plus 1. This one is much better. Range from plus 1 to minus 1. Areas with barren rock, sand, or snow usually show very low NDVI values. For example, less than 0. And this is a good sign in order to find the change in NDVI between two events. I'm going to use minus 0 0.1 for this purpose. And right now, I'm going to visualize the parameters of NDVI. The NDVI, it's going to be the minus value from 1 minus 0 to plus 0. I used palette in order to colorize my NDVI value. And the visual the visualization for the NDVI difference. It's going to start from minus 5, minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. In this regard, red colors means landslide. Green means that the probability of landslide is less. In the final step of this part, I added all these collections and also calculation as a layer to my layers here. For example, the first one is related to before the event and I selected NDVI NDVI visualization and I name it as a NDVI before landslide the same things for the collection after landslide and also I added NDVI difference here. In the final part, I colored red landslide detected areas, and until now it's okay. If I run the code, it's gonna take a while. It's going to take a while in order to be run successfully. This is my detected landslide. From here, we can see it's a detected landslide. If I deactivate this one and go to the NDVI difference, you can see a red color, as I said before. Here in the NDVI difference, I said that red means to the minus values of NDVI. And here it's showing completely the values of landslide and also the change between two different collections. This is NDVI collection after landslide 
and this is before landslide. And also we can easily see change in NDVI also here. In the final step. I'm going to export all the result into my Google Drive in image I want to export landslide detected or NDVI difference. I'm going to use NDVI difference. From description, give it a name. Okay, in the last step, I'm gonna export landslide detected to my Google Earth and Google Drive. In order to do this, I'm gonna use export image drive. I'm using image to specify which result I'm gonna export. I'm saying landslide detected. The next step, I use description in order to give it a name. The next one, I used, I'm using region in order to specify a study area. And a scale, it's going to be 10 meters. And for the final one, max pixels. That it's going to be 1e9, and that's it. If I run the code from task, I can see it here. And by clicking on run, I can download the result. Okay, until now, it's okay. If the content of this video is useful for you, please like the video and also subscribe to the channel.